What Wapiti Association is to me. For me, I really like the sense of community. And they make me feel like part of a family. More and more friends, you know. It's not they're in it just to win it. Everyone's so helpful and friendly, so it's great. It's so Everybody's willing to lend a hand and point you in the right direction. We're all out here enjoying the outdoors and water sports. It's having, you know, fresh air and all about the experience. There's nobody unwelcome. We always welcome anybody of all ages, of all riding ability. I can't say anything else. They're just such an awesome place. Awesome group of people to, and the camaraderie is excellent. Wapiti is a local group of individuals that want to have fun and look after the community and area. Just have a nice, friendly, safe place for the community to enjoy right at our back door. Because we believe the dunes and area is a diamond for Grand Prairie. It doesn't matter who you are, there's something that you can have fun at out in the dunes doing. All we ask is just don't make a mess. The Wapiti Off-Road Association started 10 years ago after the Numbum 24-hour endurance race left the peace country. The Numbum is the only race in the world on ice that lasts a grueling 24 hours Competitors from around the globe travel to Alberta to prove they have what it takes. There's a saying that you're not a true motorcycle racer until you've raced in the Numbum. One of the founding members of Wapiti Off-Road Association, Charlie Dyer, and his two sons have a love for racing. Charlie has now participated in the Numbum 17 times, with his team placing second this past year. It was after his two sons had moved away and the Numbum, now located in Sandy Beach, there was a void needing to be filled in the Grand Prairie area. For 25 years, I've been building a ice track on Claremont Lake. You know, we just started with like a two kilometer track. Then as time went on and the ice got thicker, we just expanded that and that's how kind of Wapiti Off-Road got started. One of the individuals that, that came out to play, his name was Brad Popama. And Brad had the name Wapiti Off-Road already registered with the Alberta government. So it just was a no-brainer to take that name and, and run with it. Approximately 30 individuals interested in racing their bikes, quads, and side-by-sides on the Claremont Lake banded together and an association was born. We had enough members to put an association together. So then when we put the association together, we took a vote. So Sheldon Warwick was the first elected president of Wapiti Off-Road. The goals that uh, I faced as the first elected president was honestly just to keep our momentum. We had, you know, a good starting group of people, we had some positive thought. We had a lot of people that didn't think we needed a club in Grand Prairie. One of the biggest struggles was people accusing us of trying to use the club as a way of putting money in our pockets. So people were skeptical. It was something that Grand Prairie desperately needed for its existing trails and the riding and everything that goes on in the Wapiti region of Grand Prairie. And it paid off. The Wapiti Off-Road Association started hosting ice races in the winter to continue bringing the community together during the coldest months of the year. To date, they average 20 to 30 riders every event on Claremont Lake. When we formed Wapiti Off-Road, at that time, we formed it only for racing. That was kind of the first thing that the club took over was putting on the ice racing events. And it's been a huge part of the club ever since as well. In Wapiti Off-Road, we have a lot of members that have bikes and quads and 
and they're always looking for something to do in the winter time. So, you know, the people that love racing, the competition, uh, they, they come out and we all get together and race. The association continues to host five race events throughout the winter in the Peace Country. Senior riders regularly help novice racers get out onto the ice by modifying equipment, selecting specialized ice tires that are ordered out of Quebec, and training out on the track. In 2023, they will be hosting six winter race events for the very first time. As membership grew, the association expanded from ice racing into a summer enduro cross series, which includes five events throughout the Peace Region. The first race, Magoo's Massacre, is south of the Wapiti River outside of Grand Prairie. There's one held outside of Fairview, Alberta, called the Sand Lake Cross Country, one outside of Dawson Creek called the Gundy Pinner, and one outside Hudson Hope called the Dinosaur Enduro. The last race of the series is held back in Grand Prairie, and it's called the Dunes Duster. The race is staged in a gravel pit that has been reclaimed, and then they'll head north into the main dunes area. Dwayne and other volunteers spend five to six days flagging the race course, which will be a total of 45 kilometers. We should be seeing roughly 40 riders. We've been averaging between 30 and, and 50 uh, per event anyway. So with it being the last race and this close to the major center of you know, Grand Prairie, we should see a, quite a few B riders. Hopefully some more C riders than we normally see just to get people more interested. In, you know, between 40 and 50 riders would be fantastic. There are four separate classes for each race. A class for advanced riders, B class for intermediate riders, C class for beginners and youth. Then the kids class allows the youngest riders to experience the thrills of competition. And you'll see a variety of people drive long distances to participate in these races. So there's, there's kind of two different identities with Wapiti Off-Road. One is racing and then one is the dunes and area. Once the association started gaining momentum, the new president, Corey McInnes, started to expand their work into the maintenance of the dune trail system to ensure the community has a recreational area to enjoy throughout the year. The dunes is a, a fairly large natural area. It's public lands. It's loaded full of ATV and motorcycle tracks and trails. A lot of it is wetlands, a lot of it's sand. We've been really exploring the hills and, and valleys of the Wapiti River. It does reach from Bear Creek, which is on the north side of the dunes, to the Wapiti River Junction. It's about, I would say, probably 10 or 15 miles east of Grand Prairie. And I've, to guess, I would probably say three or 400 kilometers of quad trail and single track built so far. The trail systems in the dunes there was a lot of them there already, but uh, nobody was doing the maintenance on. So we go in and try and open up what we think is the original trail. And we try not to build a new trail. You know, the only time we'll build a new trail is if we think it's necessary. The trail maintenance team has found that once a trail has been closed, the dunes will naturally reclaim by regrowing and repairing itself to its natural state, continuing preservation of the area for years to come. Here's a prime example. So this one here, how the soil's kind of getting eroded. So this trail here will get reclaimed eventually. We'll just put a bunch of deadfall in the bush and it'll just stop riders from riding it. Just, just allows the land to kind of recover a little bit, let the grass regrow. In that case, we'll move the trail over 20, 30 feet. In the general, same area, same destination, just to kind of let this stuff reclaim. It just, it grows out again and then, you know, uh, gives time for the land to recover. To continue their efforts in land protection and preserving the environment against damage, Project Wheels Out of Water was started. Wheels Out of Water relies on donations from the community and local volunteers to build bridges for placement in the wetland area. The majority of this work is conducted during the winter months when the ground is frozen and allows easier access. In the spring, this is usually a, a full flowing creek of water. So it just makes it impassable. So by putting the bridges, it just opens up all the territory for everybody to ride most of the year. To date, we have 16 bridges in the uh, dunes area. 
So we also do a little bit of maintenance on them. And of course, as new trails come up, we'll you know, take the bridges out. And it usually takes uh, you know, five or six guys to set them in, but it's well worth it. Because it's, it's, a, it's a job in order to get a bridge into a creek in the dunes. You know, because some of those trails are so narrow, you, you could never get a side by side in. And some of them are so narrow that you couldn't even get a quad in there. So we physically have hoisted the bridges on our shoulders and walked through the bush to get that bridge into place. This particular bridge is probably a year or two old. It's our largest bridge. It just has the biggest span that we have to cross. All the other bridges are fairly small except for the, the one that the government of Alberta donated to us. And that one's located about halfway through the dunes and it's fairly large and, and can fit side, small side-by-sides and quads. In 2019, after a couple of years of cancellations due to weather and construction, Wapiti Off-Road began hosting the annual dunes cleanup. One of the biggest issues for illegally dumped garbage would be the number of burnt and stolen vehicles found in the area before the dunes cleanup started. Due to the isolated and remote nature of the trail system, it is a well-known area for illicit activity. The amount of burnt vehicles, furniture, and the garbage being removed was astronomical. For 2022, the dunes cleanup was not scheduled as the amount of garbage found in previous years was just not there, showing that the public has been taking the initiative to care for their community. We were talking with the RCMP and kind of every year that we were involved in the dunes, that number just kept shrinking. Nowadays, everybody has video cameras, so there's somebody there with a camera. You know, the numbers just kept going lower and lower and lower. In that area, we have not only dirt bikes, but we have quads, side-by-sides, bicycles, joggers, walkers, dog walkers, just a multitude of different individuals that come and use that dunes area. So that's why Wapiti got involved and said, okay, we're doing the cleanup. So every year, that's what we've done. Each year the cleanup is hosted, the landfill weighs the total amount of garbage being brought in. As the dunes cleanup continues every year, the quantity of vehicles, waste, and criminal activity has been decreasing significantly. There is a huge need for a group to continue this work to ensure the recreational areas are being taken care of and Wapiti plans to continue hosting with the help of the community. We're so fortunate to have companies here in Grand Prairie that have donated. So they all come, you know, truck, driver, fuel, insurance, donate it. They donate it to, to Wapiti Off-Road and they come and help us out to, to achieve the goal. Grand Prairie is known for its generous nature. Individuals will regularly sponsor, donate, and volunteer for local organizations. Wapiti Off-Road is thankful for the amount of support they receive from their sponsors, which allows them to continue hosting their race events during the year while maintaining the trails and recreational areas in the dunes. We've been very fortunate to have sponsors that uh, have come forward and sponsored the uh, fuel. We would have burnt around $1,500 worth of fuel to do what we do. Just, just for this event? Just for this event uh, so, in Grand Prairie. One of the biggest struggles as with anything is finances. So a lot of people, it's when dealing with crown land, it's public land, like no one owns the land and we're not trying to own the land. We're not trying to force anyone to pay memberships. We're not trying to do anything. We're just trying to organize something that can be responsible for those shortcomings that the general public aren't even responsible for. We always have to be really conscious on how much money we're spending because we don't charge a whole lot for Wapiti memberships and we don't charge a whole lot to race and we have a high cost. Our fuel costs are astronomical every year plus trophies and just the time that we spend. So everything that we've done, like our racing, kind of funds a little bit of Wapiti off-road for saw gas, tools, buying saws and trimmers, oil, maintenance, 
bridges, wood, screws, everything that we need in order to do it. So our whole goal here is to get more people out here and have fun, but I don't think a lot of people know about us or what we're doing. The association relies on members to volunteer in their efforts to ensure the projects such as the dunes cleanup, wheels out of water, trail maintenance, and race events can continue perpetually. Anyone interested in volunteering can contact Wapiti Off-Road through their website and social media at any time. I think we're at over 500 Wapiti members. We have members from Fort St. John, Dawson Creek, you know, Peace River, uh, high level, Grand Cache, Valley View, White Court. Territories, we got some. From the yeah, we got we got riders and members up in the Northwest Territories. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's a big, it's a big uh, association. Oh yeah, and, and we're definitely looking for more members. I think we had 700 members. And then since COVID hit, we've been the 500 to 550 range. Without those people, like we lose our voice. Those are key to everything that Wapiti is able to do. Yeah, and that's part of our motivation with Wapiti Off-Road is to get the government to recognize us. Just the growth and you know some of the stuff that we have people for now it's it's great to see just what the club is capable of today compared to five years ago in the next couple of years Wapiti off-road is going back to its roots in ice racing and expanding the events that are known in the peace country history will be restored for the racing community Sheldon will be returning as a director after a five-year absence he plans to help the association organize for the scheduled return of the numbum in 2024 being that it was something that I was part of when I got off the ground. It just didn't, it definitely brings a sense of accomplishment and, uh, and pride and something that, that I was passionate about then is still going strong and even stronger now. There's, uh, there's some huge events coming up in the next two, three years that the club is looking to host with ice racing. So we're very pleased to be able to announce that we will have, you know, Wapiti Off-Road will be managing the 24-hour uh, Numbum ice race. So not this winter, but the following winter, we will be having and hosting the 24-hour uh, the ice race here in Grand Prairie. The association looks to the future and what they hope to achieve as they move forward. The future is unknown but they will maintain their efforts in providing events for the community to participate in and continue with their work in preservation of the dunes. Things that uh, I see for the Wapiti Off-Road in the future with the people involved right now is uh, honestly sustainability. So we've got a really good group of people, good objectives, and at this point in time, if we lose it, we're never going to get it back. I feel like if we hadn't started Wapiti when we did, to restart something like that today because of the politics and just everything that's going on, especially coming out of COVID and all the rest of it, people just have a little bit of a different agenda now. I don't know if it would have happened. So I, I just really hope to see it, it carry forward and that the people that keep getting involved, we keep getting new members with you know great optimism and, I think as long as we can keep a, a good core of people going, it's, it's just something that's going to continue to thrive. Build it into something that everybody can enjoy and, and our kids can enjoy, our grandkids can enjoy, you know. That's what I, I see Wapiti uh, growing into. Trying to build a world for everybody to enjoy.